linear relations, gradient of a straight line. Now, uh, Mr. Travis, I believe you wish more humour in my uh, uh, presentation. Well, I hate to tell you, there's not a huge amount of humour to be had in gradient of a straight line, but I'll do my very best. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know what a straight line is, so uh, let's have a go at trying to draw one. And that is a straight line. Well, not really. Maybe that is a straight line. No, maybe not. Maybe that is a straight line. Oh, I'm getting better. Um, maybe one of the things you'll notice is that as I'm trying to draw this straight line without necessarily using any tips or gizmos for the program I'm using, they're not exactly straight. Um, this one seem here has a, a downward bit of a slope, and that one has an upward bit of a slope, and this one here doesn't seem overly bad. So trying to draw a straight line is actually quite difficult. Maybe we'll talk about important language before I go any further. So rise, run, gradient, horizontal, vertical, positive, negative, all words that we may necessarily need to use. Um, write those down. Actually, don't write them down. You can always come back and look at the video later. So let's look at the idea of ooh, slopiness. Now actually, I just said a moment ago from that previous slide that actually, if we look at the idea of the lines I drew, there is you know one that seems to be sloping up one that seems to be sloping down, and one that seems to be, well, pretty straight as much as it can possibly be. So this slopiness seems to be quite important. If I now look at uh, this cartoon, yep, what you can see is this gentleman here seems to be going uphill. And if you look at his face, and I encourage you to zoom in and look at his face, you'll probably find out that actually he seems to be smiling. That would not be me in any way, shape, or form. That would not be I'd be at the bottom of the hill going, Taxi, bring the bike to the top. More likely to be this person here who's at the top of the hill, very excited to be trying to break the land speed record going down the bottom of the hill. Enough about me and back to the maths, one would wonder. Uh, right, so measure of slopiness. How can I measure this slopiness? Well, that's what we have the idea of gradient for. We want to be able to say, well, if I actually have a hill that's like that, can I measure its steepness? And if I have a hill that goes like that, can I also measure its steepness? One of the great things about maths is, yes, we have a formula that suggests, suggests even that a gradient of a slope is equal to rise divided by run. A very Australian thing, perhaps. In the UK, we tend to have something along the lines of up divided by across. A measure of how far up something goes with respect to how far across it goes. Rise, run, up, across. Not really sure it actually makes a huge difference, but, you know, uh, how do we actually use this in practice? Well, we'll take away my graphic and we'll look at the idea of two points. Now, just for information, this here, hopefully the red line you'll notice is a straight line. And on my straight line are two coordinates. They have 1, 2 and 4, 6. Now if I was trying to work out how high that is, I'm just going to try and draw the gradient again. So here is my point at 4, 6 and here is my point at 1, 2. Now what does the first value mean? Well hopefully we're all happy that the first value means an x coordinate and the second value is my y coordinate. So we know that this coordinate here is 1 across and 2 up. And this coordinate here is 4 across and 6 up. So if we look at the difference in up, we know that actually it was going, or it started at 2, and it's going up to 6. So that means that this has a change of 4 units. And it was 1 across, it's become four across, so hopefully the change across is three units. Well using the idea then of gradient is equal to rise over run, then I suppose I can just substitute in my values and say that gradient is equal to, uh, well what was my rise? My rise was four units divided by my run of three units and that will be happily my gradient. Now mathematicians are inherently lazy, uh, well <laughs> looking at me with that bicycle I'm certainly not going up the hill. So is there a quicker way of writing the gradient? Yes, well Barry's been at it again, and again if you want to look at a previous video with regard to Barry. But he has decided in maths that we are going to use gradient and we're going to shorten it and obviously it makes sense to use G but no, actually we'll use M. 
Yes, obviously answers on a postcard. The most sensible will gain a prize of exceeding knowledge. And so M is 4 over 3. That is my gradient. Woo. Let's just go back to the general ideas, though, of what we actually did. To get this value here, this value of 4, what did I do? I did the second y value, this coordinate here, and I took away my first y value. How did I get this value here of 3? Well, same thing. I took my second x-coordinate and I took away my first x-coordinate. So could we possibly formalize this in a slightly more mathematical way? I mean, don't get me wrong, we like rise over run. We're now happy that Barnaby has been at it again with this M business. But can I actually formalize it in a more interesting way? Maybe something that looks a bit more mathematical. Well, yep, here we go. There's my diagram. So now let's replace the coordinates with x1, y1, and x2, y2. So now I suppose we can say that if we have gradient, which is m, which is rise over run, and we've decided that actually our rise can be written as y2 minus y1, then I suppose we can now write this as y2 minus y1. And if we've decided our run can be written as x2, minus x1, then I suppose we can now divide that by x2 minus x1, and lo and behold, we have a pretty important formula in maths, one that's used quite a lot in different things for coordinate geometry and midpoints of line, and you'll see it a lot, but I would possibly commit that to memory. Now, it's a formalization. You know, it's, it's there, it can be substituted, and, and off we go, but I tend to always like why I'm doing something. So, what if I don't have the ability to actually have a graph? Is there a way of working this out such that I can just use maths? Well, imagine I've got the two coordinates 0, 3 and 2, 0. So we've got the coordinates 0, 3 and 2, 0. If we remember, this first value is an x value, and that's an x value. This is a y value, and this is a y value. Now, you'll notice I've put x1, y1 x2, y2. It doesn't actually matter which way round you put these coordinates, and I'll show you why in a moment, so long as you are consistent. What we need to remember is the gradient is basically the y coordinates taken away divided by the x coordinates taken away. So let's just work that one through. Here is a y coordinate, here is a y coordinate. I've done the second one, then the first one. So I'm going to make sure that I do that, 0 minus 3. I'm going to have 0 minus 3 divided by, and because I have done the second coordinate, take away the first coordinate, I must do exactly the same thing here. I must do that 2 minus the 0. And then we're just back to simple mathematics. What is 0 minus 3? Well, hopefully when I went to school, and some would argue, as usual, that I haven't left, is minus 3, and 2 minus 0 is 2, and so the gradient of that line, m, is equal to 3 over 2. But what if I had written them the other way around? What if I'd had them as 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 3? Let's just check. So following the same rules, second value minus the first value. So m is equal to 3 minus 0 divided by second value minus the first value, which is 0 minus 2. So that's going to be equal to, well, once again, 3 minus 0 when we went to school is 3, and 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And as we've said in our basic introduction to algebra previously, the minus sign is more conventionally written at the top. So I get minus 3 over 2. And what do we notice? Yep, they are the same value. All right, so again, just doesn't matter which way around the coordinates are written, it just works out. Now this thing here, obviously you've noticed, has a negative gradient. This here is a minus sign. Same thing here is a negative gradient. We'll come back to that in just a second. One more example maybe with just coordinates. Again, I've got 3, 0 and 5, 2. So, write them out. 3, 0, 5, 2. What do I get? Right, well, we know that m, which is gradient, is equal to, let's do the second value minus the second value, 2 minus 0, divided by 5 minus 3, which is 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 3 is also 2, 
and we know that any number divided by itself is 1. Now that's perfectly okay, we can have a gradient of 1, that's fine. In fact, that actually means a gradient of 45 degrees, but let's not throw anything with degrees in here at the moment. What we notice about this value is it's a positive gradient. The last one was a negative gradient, so just to refresh, the last one was a negative gradient. We had minus 3 over 2, or minus 1.5. The next example gave us a positive gradient. So what does that actually mean? Well, I suppose it comes down to the idea of which side of the hill you want to be on. And what we tend to notice was, if we plotted those two points on a graph, we would find that our positive gradient is a line that actually slopes up. All right, so lines that slope up have positive gradients. Ooh, very exciting. These are the type that I, as my little man, walking or running up the hill, would not want to do. But I am particularly excited by gradients that actually slope down. <laughs> and that's not a line. We'll pretend it's a line. Yes, this is me now absolutely happy going down. And lines that slope down have a negative gradient. So when we have two points given and we're finding out gradients, then just remember that actually the positive and negative are quite important. Well, enough of me going up and down things. I suppose at the end of the day, there are a couple of other really important gradients that we'll come back to later. But obviously not all lines will slope up or slope down. There are maybe two other lines that deserve important information or, or note. There's obviously the gradient that goes straight across. Right? A line that goes great straight across actually has a gradient of zero. So horizontal lines, oops, there's an interesting word, horizontal, which means flat. All right, horizontal lines have a gradient of zero. So why do they have a gradient of zero? Well, if you look at the idea of the gradient equals rise over run, if we look at our rise, a horizontal line has a rise of, that's right, absolutely zero. It doesn't really matter how long the line is because zero divided by any number is gonna be zero. So can we now use the same knowledge or the same theory as it were for a vertical line. Oh, and that's probably the worst vertical line I've ever drawn. But there we go, a vertical line. What is the gradient going to be? Well, if we look at it, if we look at m is equal to rise over run, what do we get? Well, the rise is, well, we don't know. It can be any number. We don't know. That's going to be any number. But what is the run? How far across does it go? Well, theoretically, it doesn't change any difference, so I suppose we would define the cross as zero. And that's where we start hitting a problem, because we should know that actually we don't like dividing anything by zero, because what that gives us is infinity, or I suppose more importantly, your calculator may show you the value of undefined. All right? So for now, we're going to assume that actually vertical lines have an infinite gradient, right? and horizontal lines have a gradient of zero. Well, that's it for this particular video. Look forward to seeing you at the next.